Hello everybody and welcome to Paige's Young Adult Book Talk. This is our first book talk and my name is Nicole Brown. Good to see you all here on this lovely Saturday morning. Um, I've had the opportunity to read tons of young adult books and I'm very passionate about young adult literature, but I'm also extremely picky. Um, I feel like it should be a great story and much of the time you pick up a young adult novel now and it's, you know, page 30 is the gratuitous party scene. And by page 60, the main character is trying to hurt herself. And by page 90, you know, it's the, it's the young adult uh, romantical scene with sexual overtones. And, um, you know, not that I don't think that that's a part of teenagers' lives, but, but I'm very picky. The story needs to encompass everything. It needs to go beyond that. So if it's part of the story... I can accept that if it's not, okay. So you know that when I bring you a book, it's going to be a great book. So we're going to start with a book that I'm actually currently reading now. It is called A Certain Slant of Light. It's a romantic ghost story. And I know the market is saturated with supernatural books about teenage lovers. But this is a story about, they're actually young adult lovers, they're in their 20s, and the, the main character is a ghost. She has been haunting um, hosts for the past 150 years, and they don't know that she's there, and she doesn't have any contact or interaction with them at all. Um, nobody has seen her <clears throat> or heard her or, or, or anything for the past 150 years. Until one day, she is uh, her host is an English teacher, and she goes to his class every day and sits through his lectures. But one day, a young boy, I mean a young man, not a young boy, he's a teenager, um, looks her right in the eye. And she's startled because nobody has looked at her for all this time. And she goes to another part of the room, and his eyes follow her. And then after class, he walks out and she kind of follows him and it, and it seems like he's aware that she is following him and he leads her down this deserted corridor and he stops and she gets behind him and says, can you hear me? And he says, of course I can hear you. And it just rocks her, her world. So it turns out that this boy is actually inhabited by another ghost-like spirit and she kind of attaches herself to him and they develop this romance and it's it's strange because he's talking to her and nobody can see her um, and come to find out that if you are one of these ghosts and haven't moved on then you can inhabit uh, the body of, of somebody who's kind of left their body so apparently souls can leave their bodies and leave it empty even though the body is fully functioning. So their next item is to try to find a body for her to inhabit. I know it sounds hokey, but it has been on my mind for the past 48 hours that I picked it up. And as soon as this show is over, I'm looking forward to sitting down and reading it. It's called A Certain Slant of Light. Um, speaking of other world and creepy, um, this book is called Servants of the Storm, and it takes place in Savannah, Georgia. Um, Hurricane Joseph has completely wiped out Savannah, Georgia, and the main character is Dovey. Um, she lost her best friend, Carly, and she's been so traumatized by that that they've had her, in, um, they've had her on a lot of medication. And she's taking this medication, but one day she thinks she sees Carly in a place where they used to hang out. So she stops taking her medication. And as she stops taking her medication, she becomes aware of this evil presence that has crept into the town. And things are not what she thought they were. And, um, and this evil presence has actually taken over her family. So it's a very creepy, very atmospheric, couldn't put it down. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, some people like the ending, some people did not. But you decide. If you want a creepy, atmospheric read, Servants of the Storm. Speaking of otherworldly, I have never come across a book like this in my life. It's called Otherbound, 
and it's by Corinne, Corinne Duvis. Um, so here's the premise. I actually had to write down notes because it's complicated, but it's great. So it's about a kid named Nolan, and he's constantly having seizures, and it just almost renders him unable to deal with everyday life. He's constantly slipping into seizures. But here's the thing. He's not really slipping into a seizure. He is actually traveling whenever his eyes close and he goes into these states. He is jumping into the mind of another person, um, a younger, um, young adult woman, who is in another world across time and space. She's, she's in another galaxy, in another planet completely. Um, and she, he has been like this passive, captive bystander to this woman's life. Um, her name is um, Ama. And um, as he's in her body, he experiences everything that's happening to her. So she is a servant in her world. And her job is to protect the crown princess um, of that planet. And... We don't know initially why the crown princess needs to be protected. Um, it's, it's a very dangerous job that she has. But one day, Nolan from our world discovers that he can actually, even she's not aware of him, right? He's aware of her. But then he discovers a way to actually start controlling her. So he can start controlling the things she says and the things she does. And when she starts becoming aware of this, she becomes furious. But she is treated so badly as a servant. And, and he is stuck with her through time and space that um, his ability to control her might be the key to freeing both of them, to freeing him from her and to freeing her from him. It really is a compelling read. Like I said, it's a fantasy. I've never encountered anything like it. That is Otherbound. Now, speaking of losing track of reality, this is a book by Nick Sheff. Um, he is a young adult writer. He's written extensively about drug addiction. And his father also wrote a book about him, Nick Sheff, called Beautiful Boy. Um, this is a book called Schizo. And our lead character's name is Miles. And he suffers from schizophrenia. And he's on a lot of medication. Now, Miles had an incident um, a while back where his younger brother, Teddy, drowned. And he's devastated by this. He's never gotten over this. And, it, and he feels like his family has never recovered from this, too. Um, and he keeps reliving that day over and over. But somehow he comes to believe with his impaired thinking that... Teddy didn't really drown, that he was kidnapped. So the book is about his journey to, to try to investigate Teddy's kidnapping. And the thing is, nobody will believe him. Nobody will help him. But he goes out on his own and he starts to investigate it. And, and he starts to uncover clues about Teddy and Teddy's kidnapping. Um, and so you, the reader, are taken along this journey. And the thing is, you don't know what to believe. You don't know what, if he's being deluded or if he is really has a strong grasp on reality or if he's a little of both and what should you as the reader believe. I want to tell you that the end of this book, the ending, blew my mind. And I actually had to go back and read the whole book again. I mean, I've... I've never come across such a mind-blowing ending. It's a real page turner. It's very sensitive. It's a very sensitive treatment of mental illness. And um, it's just a great read. I, I came to really, really love Miles. So that is Schizo by Nick Sheff. All right. So I don't know what scares you, but for many of us growing up, there was nothing scarier than a librarian. I went there. Um, 
So we librarians have a reputation, whether or not it's deserved. Um, some of our librarians were amazing. Some of them maybe not so, but there can be nothing scarier in this world than an evil librarian. <laughs> so this book is hilarious. It's a really great book. Um, this book is about um, a girl named Sin Rothschild, and all she really cares about is she's you know into drama in the high school, and she is um, part of a production of Sweeney Todd in her high school. So she is putting on that production, and um, and her friend meanwhile falls in love with the new librarian named Mr. Gabriel. Um, so her friend is Annie, and and she becomes more and more obsessed with Mr. Gabriel, the librarian. Um, until one day, Sin and Sin's crush, Ryan, they come in on Mr. Gabriel. He's alone, and he's covered with blood, and he has horns and bat wings. So Mr. Gabriel is not everything he's been cracked up to be. Um, and as the novel goes on, he is um, taking more and more control over her friend, Anne, Anna, and um, she has to try to show him for what he is and, and convince the school that Mr. Gabriel is not your average librarian. Um, like I said, it's, it's great, it's adventure, it's like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but it's also hilarious at the same time. The Evil Librarian. A good read. My background's becoming covered with books. Um, time travel. Are you into time travel? Do you love your Outlander series? All right, so here's a time travel for teenagers. So this is about um, a girl named Laura. And Laura is in 1973. And Laura's parents are divorced. She lives with her mother. And she lives with her brother and her mother's boyfriend. Um, the brother is just going out on his own, experimenting with drugs. He's losing touch with reality and the family. And the mother is trying to be young again, like a teenager again, using words like groovy. Um, and the boyfriend is, is not very good to her. So during the weekend, she kind of escapes to Manhattan to visit her dad. Her dad still lives in Manhattan, and um, Laura lives in Woodstock. Okay. So one day, while she's on the freeway, I mean, the sorry, the subway, it's, it's New York City. She's on the subway, and she looks across the tracks as the subway train goes by, and her eyes spot this handsome, groovy, foxy guy. And they end up meeting together on the subway, and his name is Jonas, and they fall in love. And they start, you know, they start to develop this this relationship, they only see each other on the subway. Well, eventually, Jonas is kind of curious about Laura because Laura seems to never have heard of Facebook, and she doesn't even have a cell phone. She doesn't know what that is. So come to find out that Jonas is from our time. Laura is from 1973. And the only time that they can see each other or be together is on the subway. And their romance develops and they fall in love, but that is the only time that they have together. So this brings up a lot of the uh, time travel conundrums, like how is it going to end? Whenever there's a romance and time travel, will they end up together? And if so, how can that possibly be if you're going to follow the rules of time travel? It's a good read. It's a quick read if you are a reluctant reader. And again, the name of the book is Subway Love. I'm going to put that right here. All right. On this drizzly, rainy day, let's close our eyes and let's think of Noah's Ark. So this next book is a story about Noah's Ark. Yes, that Noah's Ark. It's called Storm, and it's by Donna Jo Napoli. Um, it is told through the context of a historical lens. Um, so it's about a girl named Seba, 
I had to, I, it's been a while since I read this book, so I had to, I had to note her name. And she's from a Canaanite farmer's family. The story takes place about 5,000 years ago. Um, so the rains come, and you know the story. The floods start sweeping everything away in the lowlands. And, um, and she gets, her family gets swept away, but she's surviving. And the only thing she has in this world is this little, little pet swamp kit. Um, and, you know, they, they keep trying to find shelter on higher ground. She survives by climbing up into trees and clinging onto tree branches. And, you know, she survives from the dead animals floating past her. One day, she encounters a, a young man that she knew from her land, and his name is Amal, and, um, and they help each other out in surviving by, you know, going to higher ground. He saves her life, and, and she helps him out, and it's, this all happens very quickly, mind you, because the flood came very quickly, right? Um, so a romance develops between them, you know, and... Um, and she ends up pregnant, but like I said, she's very newly pregnant, really, when the story takes place. Um, so they get to the top of a the mountain. They can't go any further. They are able to fashion a raft, and now they are floating and trying to survive on this raft. And they become weaker and, you know, finally just start to accept fate that they're not going to survive this. And, and he actually becomes sicker and sicker and sicker until one day... They wake up and this rope is kind of laying across their raft and next to this rope is this huge boat thing. It's the ark, right? So she decides that if they're going to survive and if she's going to help him to survive because he's very ill at this point, she's got she's to climb up in there and, and see what they have, you know, and see if they'll be welcomed. So her newly pregnant self shimmies up the rope and she gets into one of the porthole slat window things. Um, and just imagine this for a moment. You're a pregnant teenage girl, and you're sneaking on board this ark. And there's all these animals there. Um, she comes back down and tells him what she sees, but unfortunately, he doesn't make it. Now, I'm sorry, I don't feel bad about giving away that spoiler, because it's really the first couple chapters of the book. So the rest of the book is, how is she going to survive on this ark without being seen? And it's fascinating. I mean, she goes into the stalls, and, and where is she going to stay? Is she going to stay with the lions, even though they're in a state of hibernation? Would that be where you would want to stay? Now stop that. Stop it. I know what you're thinking. Let's not worry about whether or not there really were two of every animal on the ark or whether or not it actually existed. Um, just get back into this. It is just a wild adventure that she has. It's fascinating how she survives on that ark and tries to go undetected. Um, for her, for Donna Jo Napoli to weave together a story that would keep my attention um, with this girl alone and just a bunch of animals trying to go undetected on the ark. Oh my gosh, it was so fascinating. Um, and I did read it on a rainy day, so maybe that added to the atmosphere. So you don't want to miss this one. It's called Storm. All right. Um, the last book I have is, this too was a very interesting book. It's called Belzar. And the main character, she... Um, she had a psychotic breakdown. Um, she was involved with this relationship with an exchange student from Britain at her school. And, and he died. Um, and she just can't get over it. I mean, she is just devastated. So her parents don't really know what to do for her anymore. So they send her away to a school for students that are having a hard time coping with reality. And it's actually a boarding school. Um, so one of the elective classes she, she decides to take is this journaling class, and she takes it with about five or six other students. It's a very small class, and the teacher is very picky about how many people she admits. And they have these special journals to write in, and they're supposed to chronicle 
Um, you know, each one of them has a story about what has caused their breakdown. And they're supposed to chronicle, you know, the details of that story. But these aren't just any journals. Every time she sits down to chronicle her time with this young man who she fell in love with, she goes back. She, she, she jumps back into that time so that she is actually with him. And they are together again. I mean, and he is as real as you or I are real. She can touch him, smell him. Um, she can smell him. Um, but she can hang out with him. It, it's all very real. And she becomes obsessed with just wanting to be writing in the journal and being with him. And it is him and it's not him. He seems to kind of know a little bit about what happened. Um... I don't know. He wants her back. He wants her to be back and part of his reality, too. Um, but in the meantime, here's two things. Number one, the journals are all running out of pages. The class is going to end, right? Is she going to be able to stay with him forever? Number two, they're not discussing what's happening, but she sees signs from everybody else in the class that they're all experiencing some strange alternate reality. And she ends up befriending this one a guy who lost his brother, um, and and he is having his own reality too with his journal, and he develops a crush on her. Now here's the conundrum: Is she going to stick with her journal and be in love with a boy that no longer exists, or is she going to accept reality and fall in love and let herself have a relationship with the boy that does exist? Now I want to tell you something. Just like Schizo, the ending of this book rocked my mind. I mean, it blew my mind away. It will have you questioning reality. And I actually, again, like Schizo, I had to go back and reread this book. So this is probably one of the best books I've read in years. It's called Bell Jar by Meg Wolitzer. And well, that's about all the books I have for you today. Um, I want to thank you for tuning in to um, the premiere broadcast of Young Adult Pages, and I will be seeing you around the book aisle. Take care.